No. No, uh, we're on. We're on flow and being recorded. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh you. Let's stop howling. Yeah, stop. That. <laughs> I'll lean it, Steffi. <laughs> I don't. Doug is on, but he's not. Uh, he's not on video yet. He is not showing himself as of yet. Oh. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> That's great. Life divine with Ariana Grande. Yeah. <laughs> Where does oh there it is? Gallery view is always better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, good. It's good. gone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no proof. <laughs> no proof in the internet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the reach. This is nice. Yeah. Actually, like I wanted to tell you, I got this book in preparation of uh, of the the lecture of um, oh, of Kai. Oh, uh, what's his name? Kai. Kai. Yeah, yeah. Um. He, had, he had a stroke. That's why he <sighs> and his wife died. So he must have oh. been like the last years to really um, oh, right. uh, um. Kai when he's a translator actually, oh. like professionally and also teacher. Mm. And I think also something at the university. Mm. If I got it right, but yeah, that's why he's a little bit. Uh, Haha, uh-huh, you're being recorded. Oh, I will. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. We know we're being recorded. Doug. Just like right now. Yeah, we're being recorded. This is all. Yeah, if someone turns the video on, this is where they'll be listening to this conversation. <laughs> anyway, the fight with the demon, Hölderlin Kleist, um, and his, uh, that's like, and the his, author is Kleist, or uh, the, oh, the author is like, 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 ah. And um, his, like, his lecture is going to going to be uh, about um, the ideas of the superhuman mm-hmm. uh, and he's going to compare at least Nietzsche and Aurobindo mm-hmm. so basically Nietzsche's shortcoming is uh, you know because it's the vital yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. and he just also went crazy right, right. He, he, he just broke in a way and uh, yeah and, and for Aurobindo it uh, mm-hmm. found a different uh, nice. outlet for him. But this is yeah. Saturday this Saturday is- yeah in the, oh, okay. in, the uh-huh. so, in the evening. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And we have plans on Sunday to go to the afternoon meditation and then uh, and then dinner with Isa and Gio. Gio? Gio? This is Sunday. Yeah, yeah this is Sunday. Yeah, okay. Is Sunday. Yeah. Good. And and you're going good. We're going to that. I'm happy to go to it in yeah, German. Oh my god, I'm super yeah. happy to go to it in sure. German. Yeah. 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 Okay. If not, I think if you don't if you don't like it and understand nothing at all, there is like a Buddhist uh, place right in, in that uh, town. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually curious to see that place because I told you I'm looking potentially oh. for places to look close. Oh, his to talk room. is not at the center. No, so it's, in, uh, oh, oh. it's like in Schwanter, I guess it's like 45 minutes oh, drive okay. outside, so we can have a little. Um, Are you saying you're going? Who else uh, is coming? I assume that I assumed it was a good center. It's such a special occasion also for him that mm. he has an appearance and acts as mm. uh, a lecture. So, mm. ah. Hello, Marco. Du bist, uh, oh, we, we cannot hear you. Yeah. You're muted. Ja, jetzt. Hallo Florian, du bist der Hallo. Florian, ne? Richtig, genau, ja, schön. Richtig, ja, okay. ja. Grüß dich, endlich mal. Ja. Ja, super. Hi. Ja. Äh. Ja, ja. Ja, ja, sorry. <lacht> <lacht> I'm, I'm confused. Ja, uh, because I, 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 ha, yeah, but I also was in hurry and tried to come uh, uh, not too late. <laughs> no, no hurry. The meeting is only us. Doug will join later. And he ah. just wanted to let us know that we're being recorded because Flo and I were talking about like 
Ariana Grande posters on the wall. <laughs> uh, 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 we're basically in the, in the apartment of my, my girlfriend in the house and in the room of her daughter because we are the most uh, undisturbed here. And there's uh, okay. Ariana Grande, so naturally. I will, I will try to speak not too loud. No, 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 oh, not, no, no, that's not it. That's yeah. not the, point, that's not the point is, is that there's uh, posters of Ariana Grande on the wall. I had never <laughs> even heard of her, but apparently she's like the teen thing. Ah, uh, uh, okay. No, it, it doesn't disturb me. <laughs> she's part of the super mental manifestation, Ariana yeah, Grande. Exactly. Let's put it in this way. In her, in her own special way. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Yeah, yeah. So you, you are now in Berlin, Matteo. Finally. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, finally in Berlin. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Savitri, re Savitri reading will begin in, uh, in six days. Yeah, on, on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is not so easy for me. I mean, it's 400 kilometers, right? It's because mm -hmm. I'm northern Bavaria, Unterfranken. Mm -hmm. also, ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And or something? No. Where? Würzburg? No, N Nürnberg. Yeah, in the near from Würzburg, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's about uh, 30 kilometers from Würzburg. Or mm -hmm. uh, hundred kilometers from Nuremberg, okay. but it, it is a little place. Nobody knows it. Even even Germans don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah. Little tiny town, Hasfurt. Hasfurt. Oh, yeah, I remember you wrote it in your. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I enjoy it very much because it is a lot of nature, green, peaceful. Mm -hmm. You. <laughs> You can go to the woods and walk, and it's, it's yeah. very nice, very nice, mm. very, very uh, um, relaxing. Mm. Ah, okay. Mm. Uh, so, Hello. hi. Apologize for being late. No problem. No problem. We haven't even started yet. We were just talk chatting, and Doug said he would join us in a little while. Cool. Then if you don't mind, I'd like to use the restroom and I'll be right back. Take your time. Yeah, take your time. Huh? <laughs> we can't explain that. No. Sorry, inside joke. <laughs> uh, no problem. <laughs> I didn't hear it anyway, so uh -huh. if, it, if it's a dirty joke, I didn't hear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, and how long will it? Um, long How long? How long does it take? The, the, how long? Four days. Three day, four days. Oh, four days. Four days. Four days. From four days. Night on, with breaks, of course. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be there for four days at least. Yeah. It's always something between you said between three and five days. You have yeah. more experience. Yeah. It's always it's 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 only been less than three days one time when there were very fast readers and we read late into the night. But, yeah. But most of the time it's most of the time it's been about three and a half days stopping for tea, stopping for eating, stopping for sleep. You know, reasonable a reasonable schedule. But if that's our only focus for the day is getting, reading Savitri, reading the mantra, it takes about yeah. two and a half days, but it's been as long as five days. So it, it really, it depends when some people read very slow and there's no, wow. there's no Savitri police. So there's no, like, there's no, there's, 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 been, <laughs> there's, there's, readers that, there's readers that are more in tuned and, better at following punctuation, but everyone has their own style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said that there is time for sleep uh, as it is not, it, it, so it's, it was not something obvious that you are allowed to sleep. It, 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 it sounded like, do, do you also do it without sleeping or? What do you mean like the night through or that you can sleep yeah. while others are yeah. reading? Yeah, I didn't never heard about that, but I just wondering because you say there's time for sleep to sleeping for sleeping, and I was just wondering if 
Yeah. You 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 did it also without sleeping? Or <laughs> Two, two things like it, it's everyone's free to be themselves in the room it's happened yeah. before where someone has fallen asleep mm. during the reading and there's nothing ah. wrong, there's nothing wrong with that that's okay if the body needs to go deep and fall into sleep that's fine also yeah. but i've also been with groups that uh that have wanted to do a continuous cycle have mm. someone have someone like waking and reading through through the night and i think that if that happens you can actually read it in about uh 30 hours or 28 hours yeah. Yeah. i think that that's about the time that it takes uh-huh yeah i must i must uh, make this experience uh, you will repeat it for sure yeah for sure. don't you yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can come to California if you'd like in the in the spring. That's uh, even nearer to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. But they they will be offended if I don't get, if I don't mm -hmm. make four hundred kilos, but I make four thousand kilometers. <laughs> no one will, right. Yeah, Marco. Understand. No one gets offended where you reach. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. yeah, it could be a nice thing to come. The nice thing about coming to California is. There's a place to stay at the ashram, and there's yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, let let me know if you're interested. I can email you. And oh, uh, yeah, but of course it depends. Obviously, what, well, you you already told me, but I think I have forgotten. What is this during the summertime? Or when is the? It's when is it, it's uh, the in the end of March, beginning of April. End of March. Ah, uh, but. That might be the best moment because it is not too hot and not too cold, eh? is it? Yeah. Because California is also very hot. And it can be in the summertime where the Sri Aurobindo ashram is. It can be. It can be extremely hot. Yeah, uh, that's nothing for me. I, yeah. I like the north northern German weather. Uh, yeah, it's better. Yeah, <laughs> in, in summer. In winter, not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tony's Hello. in Germany. Hi, Tony. Hello. Mm -hmm. Tony, Tony was waiting for uh, Marco. He paused for a, a bio break. Yeah. A biological break. Yeah. Mm. There he is. You already re already met? No, I don't think that Tony, Tony and I, I Flo didn't, have I didn't met. Tony. Hi, Tony. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Nice uh, I've you. I've seen you on YouTube. You've seen me on YouTube? Yes, you were there, I think, twice. Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. In the beginning. Yeah. I couldn't make it. Uh, just uh, it was very, uh, uh, very close to me, you know. Time wise, but I, I'm there now. Where? where? I there? Here. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Yes, yes. sorry. <laughs> so, shall we begin with the meditation? I, I don't. Um, I don't really have any sort of design uh, on today. So maybe before we meditate, we can uh, collaborate and uh, talk about what we want out of today. Um, Marco Morelli last week. Oh, hi, Doug. Marco Morelli last week on, on Marco Massi's suggestion, we selected a couple of paragraphs and read them and did an around the circle talk. And then it was also expressed that we did like the setting the intention of the sacred circle and creating a talking circle with a pause in between. So there's, I'm just putting out various options what do what do people want out of the session those sound like nice elements to incorporate and myself i'm not yet sure what i want because i just finished reading the book minutes ago um i've had a friend visiting and um, with us and um, you know all the other life things uh, so I've gone through this kind of uh, a tip 
kind of, I'd say, not a speed reading because I actually read it out loud so that I could really hear the words and follow um, the thought. And I underlined a number of passages that um, I would like to return to that really struck me. And I, and I feel like I started to gain a sense of the just beginning. I just started to gain a sense of like where he lands with this and like how the human aspiration at the beginning connects to the, you know, this, this um, vision, you know, of supernature uh, in the end. I think, I think going around and sharing our favorite pieces and uh, bits of it and reflecting or uh, um, resonating or receiving, you know, what's, um, what's offered uh, would be a nice way to bring the, uh, spirit to presence. I think that that would be maybe what I would like is to have a sense for this, the presence of the spirit that um, is um, being you know, articulated or expressed in, 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 this, in this text. How does that sound? Very good, yes. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have anything else to add to that? Well, you know, personally, me, I would like someone to um, just maybe you, Matteo, just summarize the chapter very broadly. I know it's very difficult. It's a brutally difficult text. I read it today. Uh, there's so much in there. But maybe you can just frame uh, frame and summarize it a little bit since you do know a lot about this and um, we can do the, the circling so it was a good idea. yeah I, I can honor that I don't want to spend too much time with that but I would I would uh, if, if, if uh, asked to summarize I would just say he brings us into an introduction and a synthesis of the entire book in the first seven or so paragraphs. And then around paragraph eight, nine, and 10, he distills the, uh, uh, the presence of sat in, in combination with chit shakti and chit tapas. And then he brings in bliss with force and uh, around the end of, I think it's paragraph 12, is like the synthesis of Satchit Ananda. And then he brings in um, a lot of different frames for how these two, uh, how this evolution can kind of coexist in, in all the different planes of consciousness. And uh, that kind of culminates in this triad of, uh, of unity, mutuality, and harmony uh, being the kind of uh, qualities that can help ground the, uh, the, um, the evolution of consciousness. And uh, uh, there's so much more, um, but but uh, that's probably all I want to say for now. I really do like Marco Morelli's suggestion. Instead of reading full paragraphs, um, do we'll set uh, Doug, Doug Doug blanked out. I'm wondering if Doug wants to be included in the circle or if he has to pop in and pop out. We can kind of I don't know if he heard that, but I'll set a circle right now with. I I will be. Available in just one minute. I'm at a college library and a room just opened up. So good. Um, okay. Cool. I prefer to be in there. Um, Thanks. Bob. Yeah. I like what I'm hearing so far. Okay. Great. So I do like rather than reading full paragraphs, maybe just going through what we've each individually marked in our book and select something out to share and say something about and be mindful of time, be mindful of a couple of things, uh, be mindful of time, but I don't want anyone to have any sense of being rushed. And then be mindful of the pause in between so that it's not like a ping pong uh, dialogue, but we're uh, attempting to channel the spirit, attempting to be in contact with our soul 
and then share from there different experiences. And since it's the last chapter, I think it can be really super open rather than uh, super focused on just the chapter that we've read. We've just cycled through a 60 page chapter. There's no real way to uh, distill that down. It's so packed. Oh, so uh, how about I, yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm not sure if Doug can hear this, but that's okay. We'll, um, we uh, start with Colorado and work our way, uh, work our way east. How does uh, Colorado, Kentucky, and then I don't know, Flo sitting on the east of me, Flo. So Marco Morelli, Doug, Flo, me. Marco Massey, Tony, I'm not quite sure if that's how, does that sound like a good order? Doug? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how it all pieces together. It's just kind of how the screen was set up for me. So Marco Morelli and then Doug and then Flo, Matteo, Marco Massey, Tony. And hopefully we can have two turns on the circle. Yeah, definitely. I would say be conscientious of the time. Marco Morelli and the channel has a group filling it up at uh, noon time. So if we're only a couple, two people into the final round of the circle and time's running short, I might actually interject and say something so that we can kind of have final statements or something like that. I'll sense into that. So everybody... Paragraph. No, not a par- yeah. not a paragraph because they're so long. Yeah. Maybe just like a couple a sentence lines, quotation yeah. to to bring in and share an experience around. But let the spirit guide you. I don't want to say no to anything. Maybe uh, if Marco Morelli uh, he said there are some passages he likes more than others. So he instead of making a sum- summary of all the chapter, just that summary about that paragraph may be good. Mm-hmm. So that he tells by making this little summary of that paragraph, what he liked more or less and so, so that we can mm-hmm. get in instead of reading it. I'm happy to have that be something that Marco Morelli or anyone does or doesn't do kind of, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know if everyone's prepared to summarize. Uh, no, no, but, but because if you say me, uh, it, uh, paragraph 25, did, what what, what uh, did you like or not? I don't know. I have to look again. Okay, this one, you understand what I mean? I have to mm-hmm. recapitulate myself. But if, if you choose, no, I mean, if I choose a paragraph, I know what I have to say and what I liked or not. No? Mm-hmm. Just in, in one's own words, I mean, on, only that, very shortly. I, 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 um, let me clarify what I said earlier. I, when I said that I underlined certain passages or certain things stood out for me, it doesn't mean I liked them more necessarily, than no, 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 else, okay. but that they crystallized um, a, uh, an insight or, or something that I felt was important. So... Mm-hmm. I'm looking through uh, the the chapter now to see where I made little stars or where I made little comments. And it doesn't have to be an entire idea even or an entire um, paragraph. Okay. It could be just that, that nugget, but the, there's no way to separate the nugget from the whole either because hmm. I think it, the, the contextualization that Aurobindo is offering in this chapter, which I think is a kind of return, you know, it's a return to why we started reading this in the first place to the human aspiration um, is uh, is inescapable, as Aurobindo would say. So in any event, I'll, whatever happens will happen, <laughs> and, okay. as it does. Does someone have a meditation chime? So Doug, I don't, I don't know if you heard that, but we just picked an order of uh, Marco Morelli, Douglas, uh, Flo, Matteo, Marco Massi, Tony, uh, to create the circle. Remembering just to kind of be conscientious of time, trying to get two or maybe even three revolutions through the circle, and uh, five, four, five breath space in between each sharing. 
I do have a, 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 a bowl that I can ring. Great. Could you, I don't know, have a, do a time a two or three minute meditation? Sure. Good. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to read. I don't know exactly what to say. What I think is um, salient for me, uh, reading this chapter and being here with all of you, all of us, um, in a sense, you know, talking about it, but we're not just talking about, you know, words on a page or, 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 a, te or a text or a philosophical idea. Um, there's something that brought us to this reading, just as there's something that brought, um, you know, you all to reading Aurobindo in the first place, who have read it before. This is really my first time um, reading his work, and so there have been a number of things here that have that I'm familiar with. The, the philosophy of Nietzsche comes in to this chapter. Uh, and I, I know that Aurobindo is grappling with, in a way, the same beast that Nietzsche was, which was you know, a civilization that um, had lost its orientation in the cosmos, had lost its... Um, 
had lost a sense of balance or proper relation, you can say, between the finite and the infinite. And as a result, um, has been acting out in all kinds of barbaric ways. And this is the situation that, you know, Aurobindo found himself in and that we still find ourselves in and even more extreme because the powers technologically and scientifically and otherwise are that much more advanced. So, He talks about, um, in these pages, just around paragraph 54, the pages where, where he refers to this one possibility of a supermanhood, this Nietzschean possibility of, you know, the um, kind of the, the fully, I, we might imagine this as like an AI empowered, you know, super corporate, like, you know, mega um, intelligence that's able to control the world in, in, in some um, very powerful way, that being one possibility. But what is the other possibility? Uh, because there's something that is emerging out of this human mess uh, and all the glory of the human species that is beyond the human. That's what Aurobindo is saying. So what is that? And he gives us the figure of the Gnostic individual and of the Gnostic community, the Gnostic um, society. Uh, which in this, I think, one could say speculative, one could say prophetic, one could say intuitive um, vision of a future uh, for ourselves. Um, that is the, you know, that is the, that is the desired, you know, that is the ultimate outcome, I think. So this is just a, a line that I under a, a small passage that I underlined, and I'll 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 leave with this and let other someone else contribute. So, what would this Gnostic life be? This is the one rule of the Gnostic life would be the self-expression of the spirit, the will of the divine being. That will, that self-expression, could manifest through extreme simplicity or through extreme complexity and opulence, or in their natural balance. For beauty and plenitude, a hidden sweetness and laughter in things, a sunshine and gladness of life are also powers and expressions of the spirit. And... Um, I do feel moved to add some, you know, some reason why that I underline that. Some reason why that was significant to me is because in this passage he's talking about the possibilities, the greater possibilities of that super, super nature, that super, super mental uh, existence, and how it um, may appear from one perspective to be kind of lacking in the um, all of the uh, drama of human life, but that in actuality, it's, mu it's even more, um, it carries even more possibilities for, um, for experience. And so I, I, I wanted to, to, um, you know, let that resonate, and that's why I, I think I underlined it. Thank you.
very much appreciate the opportunity and this group that we've shared. Uh, the time we've shared to to allow this this time to be a, a group reflection. And any reading that, that we do, if it's um, a deep dive like, like this book or, or even the smallest reading or learning, I, I, I personally, as an individual, <coughs> want it to be useful. I want it, I, there's a need for it to be a part of some, some growth. And as an individual, uh, reading about the Gnostic being and the, the Gnostic community, um, Marco mentions that at this point it's very speculative. Uh, quite quite a bit of the second half of the book, or uh, the second half of the second book, is is speculative. His thoughts on rebirth. Um, this chapter for me is an invitation to to take what I've read here, what I've learned in the group into uh, the, the groups I frequent in real life and uh, my own spiritual communities, my, my family. Um, it's, it's an open-ended chapter. It, it, it's infinite in, in possibilities. So I, I really appreciate this this opportunity, and I think I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. First uh, of all, I found the last chapter to be a complete uh, trip, and I had to really like uh, found it quite intense. We just read it together today, and uh, I was surprised that in the end he gets so um, 
it's almost like a like a warning again like it's almost uh, political to me it felt um what he said for superman it must not be confused with past and present ideas of supermanhood for supermanhood and the mental idea consists of an overtopping of the normal human level not in kind but in degree of the same kind right And then later he says, but Earth has had enough of this kind in her past and its repetition can only prolong the old lines. Together we had a walk at the park and we walked through a Russian war memorial. <laughs> so that made it quite physically, uh, <laughs> physical experience, you know, what, uh, what, what he means act actually by that. And um, another one that I, that I really liked um, is um, where he says that, There is nothing in this future evolution of the being which could be regarded as irrational or incredible. There is nothing in it abnormal or miraculous. It would be the necessary course of the evolution of consciousness and its forces in the passage from the mental to the Gnostic or supramental formulation of our existence. It would be national, nor, uh, natural, normal and spontaneously simple working of the new higher or greater consciousness. So, yeah. I find that very, um, because he, he has so many words for it, and it's a very long book, right? It's like many words in it, but in the end, uh, it, uh, it's a very simple thing. It's just not to uh, stay in this, what we are now, or to pervert it, you know, and uh, go down, <laughs> you know. But, uh, yeah, so actually, yeah, it's really intense, but in the end, it's really simple and uh, beautiful uh, and I feel that I need to like just uh, understand much more about myself and to observe uh, life more and have more experience before I can uh, judge if he's speculative uh, yeah as you were saying that or not so I just can't can't say that but I feel that there is a, there's a lot to it yeah. I'm also really glad that I can share it with you even though I couldn't be there most of the time <laughs> And, um, but yeah, it was just some short thoughts. So, what what particularly struck me in this last chapter was the fact that, after all, he didn't dwell too much in what a divine life is supposed to be. I think he dwelt in this more in the previous chapter on the Gnostic being than in, than, than in this chapter. But I liked how very much what how he contrasted the actual state of humanity and what he, okay, speculates or foresees, call it whatever you want. But there is always this contrast. Actually, uh, humans, the uh, human species is so, but the Gnostic being will be that. So, and different, differently. And by this contrast, I think he makes it quite clear, at least to me. Well, not what the divine life is, but you know, sometimes we understand things better uh, when we are told what things should not be instead of what they should be. <laughs> and that I found particularly striking in this last chapter. As a scientist, I, and so therefore I have also obviously a biased reading of, of Sri Aurobindo because always 
my 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 mind goes uh, finds uh, scientific uh, parallels so it's obviously my uh, own personal uh, feeling but i saw a lot even if he does not uh, say it explicitly yes he does in, in in some few passages but not many i i read in this also a lot among other things also the limits of our mind as a scientific rational analytic mind i just took out one little a couple of phrases where he says for example it cannot be otherwise because we can construct nothing which goes beyond our nature imperfect we cannot construct per imperfect we cannot construct perfection however wonderful may seem to us the machinery our mental ingenuity invents however ex externally effective science itself is a construction he says ignorant we cannot construct a system of entirely true and fruitful self knowledge or world knowledge our science itself is a construction a mass of formulas and devices masterful in knowledge of processes and in the creation of apt machinery but ignorant of the foundations of our being and of world being it cannot perfect our nature and therefore cannot perfect our life he in this place he is explicit but i think this theme comes up more or less uh, uh, behind the way it comes up from, uh, from from my reading very frequently throughout all the life divine because i think we are now again in a human phase where is again this ideal of the um, fanta technological sci-fi technology which will save humanity yeah? uh, marco morelli already cited the artificial intelligent intelligent corporate corporations that may control humanity and things like well this is a negative point of view but there is also the positive ex expectation of humans actually that technology will save and will finally solve the problems of humanity this is not a new idea it is and this connects to what you have already said matteo and florian to this old idea of superhuman if you take these two aspects the superhuman and the, this aim of a fanta technological society based on super te technology are still old ideas and that's something that we still uh, i feel our society is stuck in and in this chapter i found uh, extremely well formulated a uh, spirit ideal ideas and ideal that shows us how this is again a self delusion of our society and we we have to go beyond that that's what i read as a scientist <laughs> but obviously it's on my my point of view but i think it it is extremely actual extremely actual i see he describes very well some aspects at least of our society here
um, so uh, this other window, um, he's uh, a very uh, rare type of person, very rare type of thinker. Um, just only once in a while uh, you find someone who can offer uh, this type of perspective, this type of weaving together and uh, thinking through uh, society and bringing all the parts that are involved in uh, the structure of our being and um, it's just fascinating to me that there are people out there who uh, are capable of doing this. Um, what stood out for me was that he, um, there are so many, many things in this chapter. It's, it's really full of ideas. Um, I didn't, I've, I've, I've read it today, but um, uh, I, didn't, I didn't obviously fully grasp it. But one thing that stood out for me was that um, he was speaking about the needs for a spiritual ideal. We need a spiritual ideal. Everyone has some aspiration to something. I mean, even if you are a materialist, you just sit there and I mean, things are moving somewhere. Uh, and that's a little bit what, what's lacking in the uh, material world. And um, our society makes it almost impossible to develop that. I mean, he uh, writes about uh, 80 years ago, but I mean, that's, that's very true. Uh, the modern world creates chaos and it's not just the, uh, it's not just the chaos of war, or something like this. It's the chaos of the modern media. So if you just go out and interact with culture, it can be newspapers or just watching television. Uh, you step into the chaos and you just get uh, distracted. And um, it's, it's almost like the, the more you interact with uh, the media, the more chaotic um, things get. And uh, so what we need is probably some spiritual practice, some spiritual aspiration that goes beyond that and harmonizes that. And that's the type of uh, community that I think he envisions. And uh, what this will be and what this is, is obviously a very uh, exper experimental type of um, consciousness. I think uh, Devashish said somewhere that, um, uh, you know, everything beyond the higher mind, it's uh, experimental, you know, yeah, there aren't many people who are doing this, so just experimenting with this. I think uh, Douglas said something uh, to the effect that it's speculation, this speculation beyond a certain point, and this speculation is uh, us ex experimenting with this a little bit. And um, I think there are uh, other people who um, just here and there in little islands uh, step into the this agnostic consciousness or just the average person um, once in a while have, has a glimmer of this. And, um, you know, one thing that, that uh, you know, Marco said about the, the Superman and what was uh, mentioned about uh, uh, what uh, was mentioned before is that um, to do this, uh, it is not by, by our own will, but by an exterior force. Uh, so I think in his in his uh, conception of the overmantle, it doesn't it doesn't only happen by us. It happens by the outside and by many 
uh, forces that we uh, can't control. So uh, maybe maybe when things are lined up, maybe then somehow uh, this higher mentality just um, uh, will open up and will uh, guide us and will guide uh, humanity to the Gnostic theme. So I hope you could you can understand me here. Thanks. I was filled with so much gratitude as Flo and I finished the, the reading tonight. Gratitude for, for this group coming together and setting the intention of pacing at 50 pages a week and coming together to see what comes out of it. It's a wonderful experiment. About this time, two years ago, um, winter solstice of 2016, I got a group of uh, <laughs> lovely Steffi. Cheers. <laughs> 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 I got a group together at my house and we did a braided reading. I put on a vat of soup and lit a fire and made a circle in the fire room. And we read this chapter twice, braided style, going around in a circle, just to kind of um, root it. There's, uh, there's so much to this chapter. I think I, uh, there's no way to summarize it, but one thing that I would add to what I said before, I said that he synthesizes existence, consciousness, and bliss in, in a way that's just so poetically beautiful, such beautiful prose. But then he shifts and actually um, kind of interposes that onto the transcendent, the cosmic, and the individual. And he just keeps like pushing the, the individual to the front. There's like, a, for me, this last chapter is like a call to arms in the consciousness way, a call to take part, a call to collaborate, a call to, uh, to realize these things that he's not, I think we go back to time and time again, this is not a philosophical text, but it is. Uh, it's not, um, it's, uh, it's uh, in, in the, in, I think that the key difference between this and philosophical texts is Sri Aurobindo isn't theorizing this. He, uh, he realized this experientially and then is attempting to write about it coming from 
the experiences that he's had. And that's, to me, that's a key difference of why I would say this isn't a philosophical text. But uh, the, the one, one uh, I don't know if it's one sentence or two, um, but it's paragraph 40. Seems to me like a, a beautiful, like this is the hour. This is the hour. Whoever wants to take part in this, let's do it let's uh let's let's take part in it. it just feels like such a call to participation that i'd like to i'd like to read it out loud at present mankind is undergoing an evolutionary crisis in which is concealed a choice of its destiny for a stage has been reached in which the human mind has achieved in certain directions an enormous development, while in others it stands arrested and bewildered and can no longer find its way. Yeah, this paragraph, this the paragraph is far too long to read, but it kind of, it also, it brings in a lot of trappings that, uh, that we've been in. I feel like we've been stuck for a couple hundred years and uh, that's okay. I feel like because we've been stuck in certain ways for a couple hundred years, I think if we have that perspective, we do clearly see that something is emerging, which has been here all along, but which we, uh, through consciousness, can awaken to a uh, kind of a, a circuitry participation in and uh, oh, this whole chapter is so beautiful. I've read it three times this week and I could probably read it three more and, <laughs> and barely be kind of working past the, the surface of, of what he's left us. Uh, a lot of gratitude. To you all also, I really, I wouldn't have paced it at this pace if, if uh, and there's something about marking it in time also that it holds an occult force, I think, to have it, uh, we know it's whatever time on Thursday and we get together, whether we've read it or not, but there then becomes a certain, uh, a certain force that uh, the container that the group holds together that uh, when I am working on my own with this stuff, it's, uh, it, it has a different texture. So I actually choose to work with, with, uh, with people on this to add uh, diversity. Flo and I have been working together for two and a half years now and have covered a number of works, War and Self-Determination, Mothers on Education, um, yeah, yeah, Letters on Yoga, Volume 3. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it's nice to, it's sure. nice to share. Yeah. just an hour in and we've all gone once and we started late so uh, we should be able to make it around again um so i, th I think it's interesting um, to compare the experience, the different experiences that we're having, not just not to compare them for mental, you know, sake of comparison, but to um, um, learn really from 
how uh, how one responds and how one can how one reads and how one practices uh, with a text like you, Matteo and Flo reading together, and being there in the same space. I mean, that's a particular kind of experience. And you know, someone coming in and serving you tea as, as you sit and and, and talk is is uh, I think part of it's part of the uh, um, the, the, the kind of multi petaled uh, blossoming of uh, this kind of this kind of um, um, ex- experiment that we're doing. I, lo- I I want to say that I, I like this experiment, the, the experimental and the speculative. I think that the speculative is not merely mental. It's not just ideas. It's there's a certain amount here where he's saying, well, you know, this is where humanity is at. You know, we, we've kind of um, um, made this turn, you know, away from, at least in, at least in Western civilization, away from the one true God. Uh, and now we've devolved, in a sense, uh, into this multiplicity of lesser gods. But that one true God, of course, was the Christian God, and so it was not the one true God, you know, other than for the mystics and for the, those who could appreciate the esoteric and the Gnostic aspects of, of that absolute. So now there's this period of chaos, which is not just a, a material chaos. It's not just an environmental chaos. It's not just a conflict militarily or, socially or politically it's a spiritual chaos as as well because as as a species you could say like we're we're seeking a um uh you know we're, we're seeking for a new orientation we're seeking for a new center in a way you know be- before we read this book in infinite conversations land we read a book um or a couple of books by the german philosopher peter sloterdijk and uh it uh those books were part of a trilogy called spheres and we read the first two volumes called bubbles and globes and in globes in particular he tells the story of the history of um people's ideas about, you know, what constitutes the whole of reality, like what's the whole in which you're contained. And then what's the center of that whole. So in every culture you look at there, you see these spheres, each sphere has its own mythology, has its own um, set of ideas, has its own set of practices. And now those contain an inner life for those who who are within that sphere. But what happens here and what he's talking about in this chapter, the actuality of it, which Marco Masi, I think, points out, like, I was surprised by how actual this is and how politically relevant it is, um, is that all the spheres have smashed into each other because of this, you know, growth process of the human species. So now no sphere is absolute. And there's just a, a, a chaos and a profusion and a clash of spheres and at the mental, technological, rational level, there's the attempt to kind of manage all these spheres, to kind of determine individual spheres of interests, uh, values, etc., and then to use those determinations. And this is where the AI comes in to control, to control the consciousness of all the individuals and the groups. And the, this is, I think, part of what is the driving force here. But, I mean, what he says is that that's not going to cut it, that, you know, there's something deeper that um, becomes, that when we become aware of through the inter- inward turn, the spiritual turn, when you become aware of your soul, which won't be satisfied to be reduced to an individual sphere or to any particular sphere. Like it wants, it has to be cosmized. It has to realize the universal, it has to realize what's beyond my ego, beyond my group, beyond my mind, and beyond the, you know, the collective mind. And so it's like this explosion of the spheres, 
but then our, I think I feel like Aurobindo's trying to speculate what's the next sphere in a way. Like, what's what, what would it mean for there to be a Gnostic civilization, like a Gnostic reality? And this is where the speculation is interesting because he talks about the different experiments that have been done. Well, what if we do it in a monastery, but, but then that intensifies all of the individual neuroses and shit that they bring in. So that represents all kinds of difficulties. And, you know, what if we have some kind of like, you know, big a state actor trying to impose, um, you know, a, a rule of law upon all the low, lower elements. I mean, the, the, he's, he's, he goes through these various possibilities. And ultimately I think what he says is you, we're not going to figure it out. <laughs> Our minds are not going to figure it out. <laughs> that, that, that's what I think what he ends up at is uh, we have to follow the path, the journey, because part of what is happening here is that there's been this, you know, this, <laughs> this, this opening up of infinite possibilities by the, um, you know, the, the involution of spirit into matter, life, mind, and we have to play it out. And here are the kind of ways we might be able to do it, but it's going to happen. <laughs> that's, that's what I think where he, he ends up. And that's what, what I, I'm, um, what I'm going to meditate with, I think. Uh, and how exactly I think is up to us. <laughs> I, I think that we're doing it. I think that's what this is about, or at least that would be my aspiration, that we're not just talking, we're not just philosophizing. We're not even just practicing in the spiritual sense of, you know, doing a yoga or practice or an integral life practice. Like there's actually an intentionality and a directionality. Like this is going somewhere and it's trying to do something, but we are not in control of what that is or where that is. Where that is, that is up to the divine and um and we'll be successful only if it's successful through us and um and that that is i think a very profound practice and that's a very profound um um injunction that I, i'm going to continue to to uh meditate with and to hopefully talk about <laughs> with with all of you so thanks This is my second time completing the book. First time 10 years ago, I believe, as an individual, no specific group, no spiritual community that I belong to. And 10 years later, I read with a group of Seekers, most of us here have explored Aurobindo before. And I understand the, the necessity to spoon out soup and read over and over again and, and braid the threads over and over again. Um, the necessity of 
community, even as the individuals in each community are essentially like like these fists here that <laughs> they're either beating heads or um, you cannot understand what's inside my fist um, or this one cannot understand what's inside the other. We have we have language and words and whatnot, but I'm I'm interested in where I and we will go uh, in the future with the readings. Um, I've also read the human cycle, the synthesis of yoga, and I I don't know if I extracted just like my mind works with one percent uh, or up to ten percent maybe they say. Uh, I, I probably didn't extract, but maybe one to ten percent of what I could extract. Um, might share a few tidbits right now. Um, we we keep focusing on the word experimental. Maybe that's another layer, and the the mentals or the the minds, the overmind, the supermind. There's the experimind. Um, but I feel that's what he's calling out to us, uh, this reading calls out to go into the experimental realm. Um, and I, I've noted in previous calls that I, I'm i the co-clerk of a, a uh, Quaker meeting. And the more I focus on what we've read here and I'm taking what I've read here into um, my experience there. And what we're saying now, what, what he's said in this chapter about these individuals seeking that, that spiritual harmony, the unity. Um, sometimes all we need to do, or the best we can do is to sit in silence for an hour. The, the Quakers call it um, seeking the light. Uh, they also have um, groups that do experiments with the light, which is essentially what we do here. Um, same with circling and groups like that, that there's quite a bit of seeking. And um, one, one thing that happened last night as I, I was attempting to browse over it again for the second time. I woke at two o'clock. I'm, I'm focused on a concern we have with an individual within the Quaker community um, who, who's a child care worker, paid child care worker, but who's also been a member there. Um, a lot of people don't feel, in the community, don't feel she should be a part of this community any longer based on her personality and her behavior while handling the children. So I will be leading this group to hear, hear these various sides of the, the issue of, of the concerns. And this chapter really spoke to me. Um, I don't have my book in front of me. So I, I had a paragraph that when I woke up at two in the morning, I, I opened the book and um, was going to search for a specific passage that I was looking for, but I found a paragraph and, it was exactly what I needed to hear for. Um, I might even read it to the group. They, they might wonder who this Aurobindo guy is, but uh, it, it, it is, like we're saying, a call to, to experiment. To, and it, it's not necessarily just this Quaker group I'm focused on, and neither are the, the members of this group focused on uh, just the Quaker group. Each of us have multiple, a multifaceted life with multiple groups. Uh, so I, I, I'm still learning what the Ananda part of this is, uh, the divine, the delight. And, but I've, I've definitely got a better definition of the grounding and the sat.
Thank you. I just noticed that I also really liked one expression like exactly before the paragraph that Matteo read. Um, just that renounced, he must either relapse and begin all over again or disappear like other forms of life before him as an evolutionary thing from incapacity to maintain or to serve the evolutionary urge. Just that word struck me, uh, evolutionary urge, this um, formulation of uh, serving that evolutionary urge, right? So like first finding out what is the actual urge and then, uh, mm. and then, then, then to serve it, it has just some, something practical and down to earth to it that I, that I really liked. Yeah. 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 It should be evident that no rationalized piecing together or in, Genuity of mental construction can accord or harmonize this complexity. <laughs> it would be a good end as well. <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah. I also like what uh, Marco just said with the with the spheres that like through our development that they that they all crashed into each other. I mean. So not only like this, the sheer number of us that exist, but also the speed with which we can interchange, right? You take a plane, you go to, to there, and uh, we have the internet, and, uh, and these are like challenges that are very real in our day-to-day -day life. So, um, and that there is an urge to harmonize that, yeah, and that uh, mm -hmm. has something practical to it. But, uh, Yeah. Thank you. Well, um, I, there is nothing that I would say I can say neither about this chapter nor about life divine generally, because sometimes I ask myself how, what is the message or what do, do you get from it? What is the core of all that? Or if I have to explain it to someone else, give us brief impression of what we are talking about. It's so difficult, so difficult. It's it's impossible. <laughs> and, and when I try to do that, 
it uh, explodes. And that that's probably the mind that dissects everything. No? It, it explodes in many things that I would like to say and or to 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 express my feelings or my thoughts or impressions or intuitions or whatever. And however, <laughs> finally. This is the only thing that I can do at, at, at this stage. So I take up one piece. And in fact, I, it, it was no coincidence probably that we both or, or two or three uh, chose this chapter 40. I already, 39 and 40, I underlined and and I would like to go on with your, you, you, Matteo, read the first sentence of chapter 40. Uh, what struck me personally a lot was the second sentence, or second or third sentence, where he says, a structure of the external life has been raised up by man's every ever active mind and life will. A structure of an imagine." Uh, unmanageable hugeness and complexity this word comes up complexity and I, I would like to put an emphasis on this uh, for the service of his mental vital physical claims and urges a complex political social administrative economic cultural machinery also this word machinery an organized collective means for the for his intellectual, sensational, aesthetic, and material satisfaction. Man has created a system of civilization which has become too big for his limited mental capacity and understanding and his will uh, and his still more limited spiritual and moral capacity to utilize and manage a too dangerous servant of his blundering ego at his and its appetites. For me, this is again a wonderful ex description, and I cite this because I like also to speak about things that I can relate to. Because when he speaks about some distant divine life, it's little, a little bit less relatable for, to me. But when he describes this. And when he says that the hugeness of complexity, that's exactly always or permanently my feeling that we are trying desperately to manage and to control an ever increasing complexity of our society. But we feel that it is escaping our control and we desperately cling at some artifice and some machinery to keep this complexity, every ex exponentially increasing complexity under, under control. Uh, as, as a former teacher, <laughs> I can make a nice example of that. Very, very practical in the, in, in the, in the everyday life of an educational system, where we hear about the necessity that so our society needs to teach children to become able to manage the ever increasing complexity of complexity of our world and of our uh, uh, society, global, which is becoming global and ever more and more complex. You will see if you are a pedagogue, or a teacher, or someone who is in the educational uh, uh, environment, you will hear this coming up. Constantly, uh, we, we have to teach children to be able to manage an ever increasing complexity. And that's very dangerous, I think. Sri Vinod is telling us, you are trying to do this with, with, with the mind. Uh, and we are trying to teach this to, to children with, to, to do this with the mind. In, in some sense, I think he is giving us, a, how do you say, how do you call it? Um, Mm, he's saying, pay attention, think about it, because we will not be able to manage this complexity of our modern society 
by mind, or at least to by mind alone. Huh? I found this very, very interesting. And just to conclude, in the pre previous uh, chapter, he says also there for this ideal, this consciousness, stress on the material and economic life, huh? which stresses then later uh, a perfected economic and material existence, huh? uh, which ultimately might lead to resurgence of the old vital and material primitive barbarian in a civilized form. I don't make names, but I could, I know many people huh, who, who, who are fit this description. Huh? Uh, but I don't want to go into politics. So I go to the next um, sentence where he said there is another danger. Uh, the cessation of the evolutionary urge, a crystallization into a stable comfort, conform comfortable, mechanized social living without ideal or outlook is another possible outcome of this uh, material and economic life where it's too, too much stress, this material and economic life. That's precisely what I can see in many children in the classroom. Not all. There are bright souls. You can see that there are a lot of children who are awakened, who are trying to express something, but then they are dumped to their, uh, they are frustrated, they are repressed somehow. But there are also many others who fit this, 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 uh, this description. They, they are comfortable, living a comfortable, missionized social living without ideal or outlook this is another possible outcome, and this is already happening. This is, this is what I can see very, very clearly. And that's why I, I can relate very much to Shrebin, because his description of our, our actual society, I find this in his lines here. Another little detail that I throw out there. Um, you know, uh, Marco, I heard it suggested that, uh, you know, one way to um, 
uh, maybe deal with the incapability of, um, let's say, um, children of not, or let's say young adults of not, uh, uh, be capable of dealing with the complexity and be in constant modes of uh, confusion would be to teach some very basic forms of uh, secular uh, meditation, some breathing techniques, like really in school. And you know, one, one idea would be that it should be non-ideological. So <laughs> the best way would be not by the religion teacher but maybe by the sport teacher who then you know just uh, teaches uh, children maybe some type of uh, stillness meditation and some type of moving meditation so they that they could um, let's say have the tools for them to uh, uh, create some stillness and to have some more uh, control of whatever comes to them in terms of this uh, chaos and complexity uh, of the modern world. But, you know, I think ultimately we have to live in the complexity and the way, you know, I, I like the complexity. I like, I like living, living now. I like living in this global world. And you know, the way it works for me is that I just uh, look for the simplicity behind the complexity somehow. Um, yes. So, uh, yes, I, I, what I wanted to share was that, you know, by reading this, reading this chapter, now I read a couple of uh, hours ago, it was really the case that I think something, you know, it, it's, uh, so, you know, in the last, last chapter, something really culminated somehow for me. I, I don't know, just, just, uh, ex experientially, um, you know, sometimes you have those experiences to think that are not mental, but that go beyond the mental and somehow things like, they click, they click together, you know. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, a few times reading this, uh, just for me, you know, just thinking about some uh, occasions in my life, I think just saw some some clarity that that wasn't uh, wasn't there maybe, but um, you know, in, in terms of auto window, uh, you know, I. Uh, 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 for this year, I really I have enough of this. So I will read, yeah, a few uh, <laughs> a few books that I will uh, will go into now, and um, I will use this in my own spiritual practice, in my own outlook on life, and uh, but I mean, that's that's enough now. I really have I really want to kind of. <laughs> Get get there finally and um, and kind of uh, move on and live from there. There's very little prose writing that Sri Aurobindo did after um, 1921. 
the last six chapters of this book are included in that. It's a very short list of post-1929, 1921 prose writing. And the other grouping of prose gets sometimes called um, like the addendum to the life divine. He wrote it uh, in 1949 and 1950 as uh, an introduction to a journal that was founded at the time. And I chuckled, Tony, when you said sports teachers, because this, these, uh, these articles came out in the journal of sports education in the ashram. And they start out, I think it's about uh, between six and nine essays. The title is called The Supermental Manifestation Upon Earth. And it starts out chapters one and two is really all this advice on how to be a good sports teacher and how to be a good student of sports. It's really like, it's almost funny in some ways. And then it's just like this brilliance just drops into it. How uh, sports and education of the body is the building for the foundation of the perfected body and of the perfected uh, vital that's unattached to outcome and the mind that's engaged with people in a harmonious way. And, and then it gets into the transitional beings that, that uh, it's a glimpse of the transitional beings and the mind of light that can come in and the higher it's really this beautiful uh, 50 page, I think it's about 56 pages or something, not a long book in its entirety yet, but, uh, it's just, it starts out funny in that way where you're like, what, why is Sri Aurobindo writing about sportsmanship and the Olympics and things like that? And, uh, Flo and I also chuckled because we were talking about mindfulness in schools and what a valuable tool that is to, to work with children. There's lots of other valuable tools coming out of Oroville, like awareness through the body that I've mentioned before. Really beautiful uh, work done on all this uh, tactile awareness and uh, working with children of all ages. It's uh, awareness through the body is an incredible uh, practical tool for uh, some people have called it like Jedi training for the next generation. It really, uh, I sense it to be that. Uh, I think I'd like to share the, um, how are we on time? I think we have time for a quick round after this. Um, uh, I'd like to say to uh, Marco Morelli and Douglas, could you pass my regards on to Jeffrey and John and Lauren? I've, uh, I'm, there's part of me that is sad that I'm not uh, closing out with them also because there's, they were so integral for the journey on the way. Um, I don't expect that they'll listen to this video and watch that. So if you could just pass my love and appreciation, gratitude on. Am I missing anyone? I don't think so. Yeah. So I'd I'd like to finish by reading the first paragraph. If anyone wants to uh, join me and read along, it's not a long paragraph and not the first paragraph of this chapter, but the first paragraph of the human aspiration because it so ties in. It like wraps uh, the human aspiration, the first paragraph, chapter, chapter one of the life divine, the human aspiration. <clears throat> right. That starts off with these mottos, the one to divine dawn that I chanted at the first session. And then the one to Agni that I chanted with the session with uh, Devashi. And then the first paragraph starts the earliest preoccupation of man in his, awa- in, in his awakened thoughts and, as it seems, his inevitable and ultimate preoccupation 
for it survives the longest periods of skepticism and returns after every banishment is also the highest which he can envisage. It manifests itself in the divinization of Godhead, the impulse towards perfection, the search after pure truth and unmixed bliss, the sense of a secret immortality. The ancient dawns of human knowledge have left us their witness to this constant aspiration. Today we see a humanity satiated but not satisfied by victorious analysis of the externalities of nature preparing to return to its primeval longings. The earliest formula of wisdom promises to be its last. God, light, freedom, immortality. And one final addition before we do another round is the, the reason why we don't have prose writing from Sri Aurobindo post-1921, except for these six chapters and the supermental manifestation upon earth, we do have savitri. But the reason I think gets missed so commonly by academics looking at Sri Aurobindo, because I've heard it ad infinitum from academics looking at Sri Aurobindo in, in a lot of various ways. But the reason why we don't have prose writing is because he spent the rest of the time until 1926 working on pulling this realization through the vital realm into the physical realm and having this consciousness open up to be available to earth physically which is why that last work is called the Supermental Manifestation Upon Earth, which is why the Mother's Agenda is titled The Mother's Agenda for the Supermental Action Upon Earth. It's, not, uh, it's just not something mental. It's, uh, it's a work in action and a progress in action to which we're all invited to participate. I'm going to keep mine short and brief because uh, I have to go. I have another call coming up and I need a bite and a moment uh, of respite. Uh, before that, I would love to read the super mental manifestation. Uh, I love sports. I grew up playing soccer and basketball and stickball and um, uh, riding my bike and and uh, I think the spirit of play and sportsmanship and winning and losing and, um, you know, going, doing something after the game. <laughs> um, I think that that's a metaphor for life and for our human uh, play. And so um, I'm curious about what he has to say about that. I just thank you, Matteo, you've 
brought so much context, knowledge, spirit, heart to this. Flo, Marco, Doug, Tony, um, uh, you know, if you can't make it later, uh, we'll be sure to invoke your appreciation for everybody, you know, who's not here with us right now. Um, and I hope this is just the beginning. I hope that, you know, we continue with the super mental manifestation. I think that's, that's the game I want to play. Uh, I think that's, that's, uh, I think that's the future actually. And, uh, and here it is. So thank you again. I, I too would like to keep it brief. Um, I feel like I'm separating from the text and into what what can possibly develop into the future. But a few things are coming to mind, um, building off of Marco, Massey, and Morelli, Tony, and everything that Matteo and Flo, you've said as well. But um, I'm drawn to yoga in schools. I'm reminded of new threads of political ideology. Um, metamodernism is uh, something that keeps popping up in um, my, my circling mind. Um, there's a book called The Listening Society that proposes a more, like Tony was saying, a more secular approach to the spiritual side of things. That, um, and I... Personally, I don't fully agree that's, that's my, my game to play, um, though I see as, as for, for within politics, within society at large, within the grand earthly community, that, um, that, that might be the direction we, we need to take is to, um, if science is going to go anywhere, it, it will see the benefits of meditation and utilize that within school, within the first five minutes of face-to-face -face political meetings, we'll say, well, instead of promoting negative ads, we'll promote positive ads. Um, um, also rereading The Glass Bead Game uh, by Herman Hesse, and there's a lot of relevance to what we're doing here. Uh, Marco Massi also attended a, what we call Cosmos Cafe, we do on Tuesdays within these these conversations and there's quite a bit of resonation with that book and um, what our society potentially could be and uh, or and the seeking of harmony within that book is delicious. I, I love <laughs> rereading. That's another book I read 15, 20 years ago and rereading it with the spiritual side um, right alongside of uh, it's the spiritual side is now within me to a certain extent. Uh, more so than it was before. I didn't have a definitive term for what was going on in my discoveries, uh, why I was so focused on a certain side of life. So like we're all saying, this will continue. This, whether we read the synthesis of yoga or not, or whether we focus on a certain text that we're, we're pulling ourselves and we're allowing ourselves to be pulled by, by the spirit, by the, the light, the divine within us. And yes, the more we tap into that, it, it emanates from us. And yeah, it's, it's delightful. <laughs> so thank you, everyone.
Yeah. I just thought it would be nice if someone would read the last paragraph of the book. <laughs> That's me. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. If there is an evolution in material nature, and if it is an evolution of being with consciousness and life as its two key terms and powers, this fullness of being, fullness of consciousness, fullness of life must be the goal of development towards which we are tending and which will manifest at an early or later stage of our destiny. The self, the spirit, the reality that is disclosing itself out of the first inconscience of life and matter would evolve its complete truth of being and consciousness in that life and matter. It would return to itself, or if its, if its end as an individual is to return into its absolute, it could make that return also. Not through a frustration of life, but through a spiritual completeness of itself in life. Our evolution in the ignorance with its checkered joy and pain of self-discovery and world discovery, its half-fulfillment, its constant finding and missing is only our first state. It must lead inevitably towards an evolution in the knowledge, a self-finding and self-unfolding of the spirit, a self-revelation of the divinity in things in that true power of itself in nature, which is to us still a supernature. Yeah. Well, uh, there were a lot of paragraphs that w I would have liked to bring up, uh, but now I lost them because I didn't sign it. To this, 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 this. So I was <laughs> a bit hastily looking up where he said this, and this, and I don't find it. So. But I like to comment on paragraphs. Uh, the last one that Flo um, read is, I think, a wonderful summary of, well, just that summary I was like looking for uh, previously and that I could not, cannot express in my own words. By the, by the way, the way he... Uh, the words of Sri Aurobindo summarized ideas is very, very strong, potent. But just because I have this need, sorry if I'm a bit egoistic and I'll come up with my own things and point of views, but we're the, the first of all the paragraphs. Now, so we have gone from the last paragraphs of the book to the first paragraph, from the first paragraph of the book to the last paragraph, I would take up again the first paragraph that Matteo read, read where he, uh, Shurbindo talks about this constant inspiration that sooner or later comes up again. We can do what we want in a form or another, it comes up again. This is something that I have seen constantly also in my life, my professional life, uh, in a, an academic environment where 
you know, normally these kind of discussions don't come up. It is, it is kept secular and it, it is okay that it is so. But if you look closely, you see this idea uh, that there is more than matter, that we are more than just a biochemical reaction, that there is an urge to know things more profoundly, also at a spiritual level, comes up again and again. And it's interesting to see how many people, scientists, physicists more than ever, everyone else, um, are a bit puzzled and they don't understand why. Why have the people this need to slip very often into metaphysical issues and to, into questions that need also uh, expose an, a metaphysical spiritual uh, curiosity. Uh, I would like next time, I thank you very much. I now have this perfect paragraph and then we'll read, I will read them this paragraph. Here you have the explanation why this comes up again and again. Huh? And well, that, about this, we can make a lot of things. Uh, could talk a lot also through direct experience, which was not always very pleasurable with, with some type of academic environment. And I wanted also to say, yes, uh, it's, it's a point that uh, Tony made, let's say he said, complexity after all is simple. That's exactly the point, I think. Huh? When complex, an extreme complexity, if you look at it from the mental point of view, is extremely complicated. If you could look at it from higher mind point of view or spiritual point of view, yeah, it becomes very simple. Uh, solutions, uh, uh, and that's precisely what we have to to to. No, no, I don't like to say to teach to children because then we I take again this this point of view that we have to teach something. And Sri Rabindo, by the way, said that we cannot teach nothing. <laughs> but there's one one of his principles of education. And I like very much this idea that we must go towards a society and an educational system that supports sports, yes, meditation, mindfulness. These are precisely the things that bring us back to a contact to us. And uh, not all, so that we are not always focused on the external things. And this is also something that also uh, adults need, I think, not only children. Perhaps even more adults who have suffer burnout symptoms and things like that. And um, this is what we have to find again. And I see again and again where Sri Aurobindo is talking about, especially in the last chapter, surprisingly. I didn't have this in mind. This is the third time that I got through. And I, I didn't notice that. But the, the, this, this last chapter, he brings up the problems of the modern society like this, uh, of also education. He doesn't cite it ex explicitly, but if you can find it again and again there. And this problem of complexity, the problem of the, how the spirit ultimately will manifest itself in a way or another, if we like it or not. So this is, I don't have general considerations to make. This is, I just like to take up points here and there, just randomly, and to comment on that. That's my style. Well, Marco, I think I'm the type of person who tries to dissolve the complexity 
and kind of maybe meditate my way through just at some point my brain just shuts off because that's just how uh, uh, my mind works. But I think if you like, if you're really smart, if you're a genius, you will find those uh, met simple mathematical formulas that can grasp the complexity. And this is the work of a genius then. And I had the theory that, I mean, there are certain types of people and certain types of people deal differently with complexity. There's another type who, uh, for whom um, this complexity really explodes into those big theories. And I think that uh, Aldo Bindo is one of those people who then you know, creates this great uh, visions and so on. So, um, yes. Um, I wanted to say thank you for everyone who's involved in this in this reading. It is it is the, the last reading, but we will have in two weeks, like we will close it up in two weeks. Uh, there will be another session and I will be at the next session also, but I would really like to thank everyone who's involved because I am very interested in this. I really like exploring those ideas and it's made me feel like I'm less of a kind of um, weird guy who just uh, out there. I really don't know anyone who's really interested in exploring, let's say, out of window, and it really made, made me feel less less strange. So thank you for thank you for your time, and thank you that you're interested in this. And those uh, calls they have been very uh, transformational for me. So. Um, like really, um, I, I think I've gotten a lot out of this course, and I do have some ideas for the future uh, with this uh, integral conversations. Just very quick, so um, you know, I just personally, I really like out of window, but I want to read some something else now. You know, um, just just as, as an idea, I want to read. Um, by uh, this book by um, Jean Baldriat. I don't know, it just pops up for me, this book, uh, uh, I think Structure and Reality or something like this. The most, I, I wanted to ex explore more of this postmodern in-between world of science and, as, uh, and certain media theories that really do explain the way that at least I for myself like make meaning in the world and if this would be something that I would be uh, passionate about and uh, I would like to su suggest that type of reading in the future and maybe uh, something uh, could come together but I just wanted to thank everyone who's involved here it was just a lot of fun really and um, um, uh, we will uh, meet again in a couple of weeks or in a few hours with uh, with the next session, so thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, Matteo, uh, thank you, Marco, thank you, uh, Douglas, and everyone else. I feel pretty complete. The only thing that I want to add is, uh, Doug, I named my my uh, beloved dog Magister Ludi. <laughs> based on the main character of the glass bead game. And uh, the, I don't think that that many people know, maybe you know that uh, the journey to the East is a sketch for the glass bead game. Yeah. It's a, uh, wow. I just thought that that was beautiful. And when I understood that, I started linking a lot about those two books together. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. I don't think that there's any, final words that I can add about Sri Aurobindo and the life divine. It's a good beginning. Yeah. I think also every one of you, it was very, very inspiring and very interesting. In, in reality, the first experience for me, another guy who feels very strange among the other. <laughs> yeah, I find. Stranger in a strange land. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, here I find, so to speak, a tribe. Mm -hmm. 
where to meet. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, thank you to all for that also. We'll see you all in a in I think I think three weeks actually. I think it's because in two weeks it's Thanksgiving and I think it was proposed to meet a week after that, but I'm not sure. I think that'll all play out on the forum. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Have a great day. Bye. And we will see you in three hours. Yeah. Be there tonight. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Nighty night. Choose. Bye bye. <laughs>